Now that I have shown you how to draw perfect curves and decent corners, or in my case, perfect corners, I wanna show you how we combine all that into actual shapes. So again, in Illustrator, I'm gonna to go to File and New. This remembers the last file I made, so I could either recognize that or start again with Print, Tabloid, set my measurements to inches again. Either one will work, because they're both the same. Vertical sheet of paper one more time, and I create. And I'll remember that little rhyme, file menu and place so I get to trace. On my desktop, I'll go find my chapter three folder. There is 3.1 and here is the third file. I click once, make sure I check my options so there are no check marks turned on. I click place and I click. With my black arrow, I can move that scan onto the page. Double click to the right of the name layer one. That brings up your layer options. And we'll just call this scan one more time like I did on the first file. I will make that a template. My screen is turned on a little brighter for my demos. I usually recommend people do it in class like down to 30%. I'll make mine 20% just so you could see my drawing a little easier. And I click OK. Now it's dimmed out, like I've laid tracing paper on top. That layer is locked. It's like taping down a photograph on an artboard and then taping down tracing paper on top. Last thing you want is your photograph to move, so our scan will not move. You leave that bottom layer alone. It's locked for a reason. You create another brand new blank layer. I can double click on the name and we'll just call that one shapes. And I'll hit return or enter on a PC. Since I'm on a brand new layer, D for default colors. And here's what I wanna show you. When you hit D for default colors, that fill will be set to white. Okay, D for default colors also means your black stroke will be set right up here to a thin one point stroke. We wanna make it thicker so we can see what we're doing. So I'm gonna hit the up arrow. We're gonna make it five points. Okay, here's the reason why I tell you to turn off the white. Let's say I don't. And I zoom in here, I'll click two times. I can hold my space bar to move it around if I need to. But if you don't recognize this white and you start to draw with your pen tool, let me show you what happens. I'll just do it really quick. It starts to cover up your scan. Then where am I supposed to draw? Okay, so I'll hit delete twice or backspace twice. Anytime you have a fill, it will start to fill immediately. So people get confused when their scan starts to disappear and they don't know what's happening because you're filling white on a white sheet of paper. Just to show you, I'm gonna click on that white and set it to orange. And then again, as I start to go, you can see how Illustrator starts to fill artwork. Then I can't see my scan. Where am I supposed to draw? So the general rule is always draw black outlines first, then do color last. Otherwise, it covers up your drawings. It covers up your scans. So I'm going to hit delete two times or backspace two times. I'm going to click on my fill and then hit the question mark key. Draw with no fill at the beginning. So right here, start here and end here. I'm gonna start here, click and drag up and to the right, let go, move away. Now the curve comes down and to the right, so I'll press and hold and continue down and to the right. The next curve starts from a corner. 
Option or Alt key, and now it goes up to the left. Let go of the mouse, let go of your keyboard. It goes up and to the right, so at the end of your curves, don't touch the keyboard. Press and hold and continue up and to the right. The next curve starts from a corner. Option or Alt key, it comes down and to the left. Let go of your keyboard at the end. And now it goes up and to the left. The next curve starts from a corner. Option or Alt key. It comes down and to the left. Let go of your keyboard at the end of the curve. And now it goes back up to the left. The next curve starts from a corner. Option or Alt key. It comes almost straight down. Do not hold the keyboard at the end of your curve as it's coming down and to the left. So I'm going to press and hold and continue down and to the left. Here's the trick at the end. Option or Alt key because you're starting from a corner. It goes down and to the right. But then if you are ending on a corner, see that little circle next to your pen tool? That means you're at the end. You've looped all the way around. If you are ending on a corner, you have to hold your Option or Alt key. This is the one instance where you also hold it at the end. If you don't, watch my screen. I click and drag and then I ruin the first curve. So if that ever happens, Edit, Undo, and just try it again. Option or Alt key to start from a corner. It goes down and to the right. When you see that loop and you are ending on a corner, hold your Option or Alt key. Now I click and drag down without ruining the first curve. Command click on my Mac or Control click on a PC to click outside to deselect. Space bar for the hand tool and I'll push it up. And it says, on a curved shape like this, do not hold the option key. There are no corners here. Okay, corners are only for, op uh, option key is only for corners. If your blob has no corners, the option key is not going to be used at all. From here, it goes up and to the right let go and move away now the black line comes down and to the right so I'll click and drag down and to the right let go move away now it starts to go back up to the right so I'll click and drag up to the right let go move away now it turns and goes down to the left so I'll click and drag down to the left let go, move away. Now the curve is turning at the bottom and going back up to the left. So I'll click and drag up to the left. Let go and move away. Now it turns and goes back down to the left. So I'll click and drag down to the left. Let go, move away. And as I come around, all the way back to the start, I see that little circle, but that is not a corner. So I'm not going to touch my keyboard. I'm just going to press and hold and continue going up and up and up and up until the curve below matches. Command click to deselect or control click on a PC. Space bar for my hand tool. And now here's where I really want you to follow along with me. Over the past couple of semesters, people draw really fast and then I mark them down because they did it wrong because they're not paying attention to details. Okay, I'm going to start right up here. Click, click, click on every corner. Click, 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 click. If everything is straight lines, I don't have to hold my option key because it's not ending on a corner that's connected to a curve. This is all just straight lines. If you held your option key here, it's not going to hurt it. You can click anyway. 
But see, I kind of accidentally dragged, so I don't want to do that. I come up to the end, click. Here's the problem. When I click outside with my white arrow, my editing tool, I have sharp corners here. These are both sharp. These are both sharp. These are both sharp. But that one is not. It looks odd. Okay? Be consistent in your drawings. Why would every corner be sharp except one? That looks like an error. And I did that on purpose. So here's how Illustrator works. When you take your pen tool, if you draw a wide angle, you will get a sharp corner. If you draw a tighter angle, you will still get a sharp corner. But if you try to draw a really, really tight angle like this, you will not get a sharp corner. Illustrator knows that wide angles produce nice corners. This one, the corner would go way up here. It would look like a needle. It would look like it would kill someone. So Illustrator just decides, hey, this angle is not wide enough, so we're not going to do that because it's not going to look good. Okay, so I'll delete those. If you get an angle that chops off, that's because this angle is not wide enough. So you can take your white arrow, click down here, and just move that point a little wider apart doesn't take much but that's it now I've got sharp corners all over the place students have asked me why do you want to do that now you can tell you're not on the drawing like well don't you remember that when you're done drawing you delete your scan so who the heck is gonna know your scans are for your reference not everybody else's so nobody would ever know I was off. I do that all the time. Okay, so here we go. The last thing you're going to do here is hit Command and 0 on your Mac. That would be Control and 0 on your PC. And then you'll notice I had you draw three separate shapes. One with curves and corners, one with no corners, one with straight lines and corners three objects. What I want you to do is experiment with these. You'll notice over here you have your swatches panel. Your swatches panel stores three things. Colors, gradients, and patterns. Okay, so I'm going to take my black arrow, click and drag and hit the first object. And if you are on your fill, you can see how that's on the top. You can fill it with a color. If you click on the stroke, now it's on the top. You can change the color of the outline like that. Okay, whatever's on top here is what changes over here. If you click outside and nothing is selected, no color changes will happen at all. It doesn't know what to put the color on. So if I wanted this to be a red outline and let's say a uh, light blue, I would click on it, click on the fill. Now that's at the top. And now I can either pick a light blue here or jump into my color panel right above and say lighter, lighter blue like that. Or pink or green or gold or whatever you want. Okay, your swatches panel stores colors ready to use. If you don't see a color that you wanted, you can mix it up right up here by clicking on the little spectrum. Okay, I'm going to click outside. The first object you fill with a solid color. Your swatches panel stores solid colors. The second object, you're going to fill it with a gradient. That's the second thing your swatches panel stores. Unfortunately, you only get four cheap little gradients here. Black and white, yellow to orange, blue to nothing, or this radial gradient. Okay, I'm going to start with black and white, but that's kind of boring. So what you should be aware of is on your swatches panel, 
in the bottom left corner of it is Swatch Libraries. Additional collections of colors, collections of gradients, collections of patterns, if you don't like what shows up here automatically. So I can click down here, my Swatch Libraries, come down to Gradients, and Illustrator comes with all these different collections of gradients, like a spectrum gradient, a rainbow. And now I can click this one and get a full range of colors. So your Swatches panel stores colors. It also stores gradients. We'll just close up those spectrums. The third one down here, I'm going to select it. And the third thing your Swatches panel stores is patterns. Whether you get this ugly pompadour pattern or this foliage pattern. But it only gives me two to start with. So again, if you don't like these two, which show up automatically, in the bottom left corner of your swatches is swatch libraries. Down here is a collection of more patterns. And you have different collections here. Anything that says basic is going to be black and white dots or black and white lines or black and white textures. Anything that says decorative is kind of like plant-based. Anything that is nature is also going to be either plant-based or animal skin. So pick whatever one you want. I'll just go with basic and graphic textures. And unfortunately, these show up really small. I can't even see what they're going to look like. So if that ever bothers you, it shows up as a separate panel. You go to your pop-up on that panel and just say large thumbnail view. So now I can get a slightly better look at what they are. Still not big enough for my terrible eyesight, but at least I get a hint better of what they look like. So when I come up here and I click on capsules, as soon as you click on this separate panel, capsules, they get added to your swatches panel. So if I clicked on sticks, it gets added to my swatches panel. The whole reason for that is that you might get confused with panels on panels on panels. So if you closed up your patterns, they're not going to disappear from your swatches. Whatever one you try to click on, it will be saved. Just like I clicked on the spectrum, now it's saved on my swatches. I clicked on a pattern. I tried sticks, but I also tried capsules before. Okay, so I'll just go with sticks. So those are the three things that your Swatches panel stores. Colors, gradients, and patterns. I don't care which color you use or which gradient you use or which pattern you like. Just try them so you're visually telling me you understand the three things that the Swatches panel is going to store for you. Colors, gradients, and patterns. When this page is done, file menu, save as, last name, first name, uh, let's see, drawing shapes on my desktop. I don't change the format. I'm working in Illustrator. I'll click save and I'll save it. Okay, I'm done. There we go. Know about your swatches. Know about option or alt key for corners know about sharp corners and be consistent with them because that's the stuff i will look for in the future simple mistakes that could have been easily corrected with your white arrow all right now you're on your way to creating illustrator greatness i'll see you in the next demo